Hello and welcome to the second of our online services. Um, today is Passion Sunday and um, I'm delighted to be able to say that a number of different people have contributed to this service. Um, so I've had Sally Smith is doing the Old Testament reading for us, Tom Morton's doing the New Testament reading for us, our placement student Malcolm um, has put some prayers together for us that he filmed himself. Um, this is a first for all of us trying out these different things so um, there'll be some teething problems initially but I'm, I'm really pleased with the creativity uh, that's coming out of people. Um, my really dear friend from school Claire who lives down in Southend where I come from, um, her daughter Monica has done us a beautiful picture to illustrate our gospel reading today, the story of the raising of Lazarus. So you'll see Monica explaining the picture that she drew for us. So thank you to Monica for her beautiful picture. Um, so as you, you'll be able to see, different people have taken part. And if you think maybe I could try that, then please do let me know, because as we go on with our services over the next few weeks, I'd like to involve as many people as possible in our services. So just let me know if you'd like to contribute something. So um, we're going to click through the service now. Um, so do settle yourself um, to watch this with your family. Uh, you may wish to light a candle at home as a sign of God's presence with you. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. So we take a moment, as we always do at the beginning of a service, to call to mind those things that we've done, that we wish we had not done. Some of this experience of the coronavirus is bringing out some of the worst parts of our character as well as some of the best parts. And so we take a moment to think about those bad parts and we seek God's forgiveness together. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. So we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you, we have done evil in your sight, we are sorry and repent, have mercy on us according to your love, wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin, renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. The Valley of Dry Bones, the hand of the Lord was upon me, he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. And he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath and enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, 
and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So as I proph prophesied, uh, as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a, a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, Prophes prophesy son of man and say to it, to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from four winds, O breath, and bre breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon, up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, O oh my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land. land. And you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from Romans, chapter 8, reading from verse 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's laws, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, Bryony. Um, this is, I was going to talk about this. Um, this is Lazarus. That's Lazarus. And that's... Um, Where's Lazarus? The, oh, yes. That's his two sisters. That's Jesus. Yeah. Healing him. That's the heart I wanted to do for people who have died. And that's the sun, and that's my name. So, just in case people don't know who it's from. So this is the second interpretation of the Raising of Lazarus story that we've received. Thank you ever so much, Evan, for sending this in. It looks like you've had great fun with your Lego and dinosaurs, and I always think you can't have too many dinosaurs. Um, so this is this is the interpretation as as done by Evan. So Lazarus is there, um, dead in bed, and one one of his sisters is is sad by his bed. The other sister is finding Jesus in her car, and Jesus is in the car with Spider Man in the front with the Spider Man front. It's got a very Jesus has a very cool car in this story here, and the dinosaurs, zebra, rabbit, and leopard. I don't know if you can spot them all here. They've all come to the house as they feel sad because their friend Lazarus has died. So there we go. That's one little element of the story that we're just about to hear. So that was the trailers. Get ready to hear the gospel reading itself now. So 
So now we come to hear our gospel reading, and usually we would stand for our gospel reading, but this week is particularly long, so you may wish to sit down for this one. And um, Perhaps you would like to read along in a Bible. You'll find it in John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher's here, and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there already is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, 
his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings today are about seemingly helpless situations. We heard that great reading from the wacky book of Ezekiel. Now, if you don't believe me that it's wacky, then go and read it. We heard this vision of the valley of the dry bones. Ezekiel is granted a vision of dried out bones joining up together again to form living beings once again. Something impossible becomes possible with God. Then our gospel reading, so beautifully illustrated for us by Monica, is an amazing narrative, a story of the death of a friend, a funeral without comfort, a sealing up of the tomb to avoid contamination. It parallels with our own experiences around the world at this present time were not lost on me. It's a story of seeming helplessness, and we hear it in Martha and Mary's words. If you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. How often we have said the same words to God. Where are you, God? The three things I want to say today about this are, firstly, that Jesus is the human face of God. If we want to know what God is like, we look to the person of Jesus Christ. In this account, we see Jesus moved to tears. We hear that shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. In the face of death, and particularly the death of a friend, Jesus weeps. He doesn't only weep, but he has moved to anger, that emotion most of us experience when we are grieving. Jesus, and therefore God, weeps with us when we weep. He's angry with us at death and loss. Jesus does not stand aloof from grief. He sees his friend Mary crying and he weeps with her. This is what Jesus is doing with us now, as we see loss happening all around us. Jesus weeps with us. Secondly, Jesus meets us where we are. Look at how he treats Mary and Martha differently. He knows just what they need. He knows that Martha is ready for a debate, and he answers her questions where she is looking for answers. He knows that Mary is too upset even to come out of the house and sends her a gentle message to come to, to her for her to come to him. And when she cries, Jesus cries with her. Jesus always meets us where we are. We don't have to put on any airs and graces. He knows us intimately and knows just what we need especially when we're bereaved. Jesus meets us where we are. And thirdly, the resurrection is real. That is why this account is laid out by John in his Gospel. It is, of course, a foreshadowing of the resurrection of Jesus himself. And so that is why we hear this reading before Holy Week begins. Because our hope as Christians is not wishful thinking. It is based on the fact of the resurrection of Jesus. At every funeral I take, I say the words of Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. In our Gospel reading, Jesus says to Martha, Do you believe this? And so I say to you, Do you believe this? Now you may find it hard to answer yes to this. I sometimes do. But it is the absolute foundation of our faith. Without the resurrection, our faith is worth nothing. 
So say yes with me and with Martha today. Yes, we believe. We believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. We believe that God can do the impossible. We believe that hopeless situations can be full of hope if we trust in God. We can say this because we know that Jesus weeps with us and meets us where we are. Now, I don't think little Monica, when she drew this lovely picture, realised that she preached a little sermon in her drawing. You can see here that she drew a big green heart for people who have died. This is a sign that the resurrection is true for all those who have died, all of our loved ones. The story of the raising of Lazarus is a reminder that the resurrection is real and we will all be raised with Christ. So let us remember that as we face the difficult days to come and as we walk the way of the cross with Jesus. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the people of the living God, let us join together in our prayers for the church and the world for today. Let us pray. Holy God, at this unprecedented time, breathe new life into our church. Inspire us with new ways of reaching out and doing church. Breathe holiness and deepen our faith. Breathe energy into us. Inspire us with your teachings and make us more receptive to your gentleness and power. Holy God, we pray for our world as it fights the threat of the coronavirus. May we learn to be more responsible and more caring. Fill us with honesty and compassion. Fill us with love for one another and fill us with vision and hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, breathe your life into our homes and places of work. Fill us with increased patience and understanding of one another as we enter this time of uncertainty. We pray for all key workers, especially for all the NHS staff who are compromising their own health daily for others. We pray for our families and friends, and for our neighbours, and we pray for those who are in isolation on their own, the elderly and the vulnerable people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, breathe your life into those who suffer. Bring healing, comfort, 
wholeness and bring them peace of mind. And we pause to think of anyone we personally know who is suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now turn to our prayer list and we pause to think of those who are suffering in body, mind and spirit. And we pray for the departed. And we pray for those who we no longer see, whose anniversaries fall at this time. Holy God, breathe your life into us now as we offer you here our thanks and praise for your life laid down out of love for us. May our words be worked out in fresh commitment to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So let us gather all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to our act of spiritual communion. You may wish to change your posture, you may wish to kneel as if you're kneeling at the altar rail. You may wish to hold your hands out with your palms facing upwards to receive the Holy Spirit. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus. Dwell in me, and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. I will leave a time of silence for you to pray this prayer yourself. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we also do for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, 
now and for ever. Amen. Let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.